Okay, so just just this is just a random name, but what was your relationship with Tupac? It was something about a fight at one point, right? Okay, I'm a Tupac fan first and foremost. Let me make sure. You got to be. Love Tupac. Got it. But my introduction to Tupac was 1991. Um, he did a song with a rapper from Oakland named The Governor. The Gov. Mm -hmm. Shout out to The Gov. And he did a song. And on that song was another rapper from Oakland, East Oakland, Richie Rich. Shout out to Richie Rich, too. But at this time in 91, Richie Rich, grandma or family member, lived in Filmo on Central Street. And when he come to his family house, some of my people from Filmo chased him while he was in his cougar. A cougar... Candy paint, gold ones. You know, of course, in any neighborhood, you see a car like that. So some of the guys, that that's what they do. They tried to get him. Well, he put it in the song that he rapped on with Tupac and Gov. The situation happened in 90, so I was locked up in 90. I got out in 91. Um, the Gov put that, put that, um, that uh, EP out called The Governor's Taxing featuring Tupac and Richie Rich, and he had some other songs. That came out in 91. <clears throat> they got a club on Broadway that was popular for concerts. And at this, at this, at this, at this time, they booked Richie Rich, the governor, and Tupac to come and perform. At this performance, we came to the performance to get Richie Rich. Because he said, I got some broke-ass film on niggas trying to jack me for my gold tones on this mm. song with Tupac and Gub. It wasn't, it wasn't like it was personal. It was more or less like, man, this nigga dissed us on this hot-ass song with Tupac. <laughs> man, and they got a show up the street from Filmo tonight. Right. So we go to the show. We let them get into it. We was waiting for that song to come on. As soon as that song come on, niggas rush the stage. While we rushing the stage, Tupac grabbed the mic stand, and he swinging that thing. Good, everybody swing, everybody fighting. None, none of them was punks, but we it was more of us than them. So we overpowered them. Tupac, he took some blows. He got his jury took. My people got the jury, you know. Um, and it wasn't really personal, you know. What I mean, he fought back hard. Was Tupac just a regular guy to you at this time? Hell nah, this is Tupac the rapper, but, the movie star. But I thought you were talking about like 1991. 91, he was still a star. Really? 91? Okay. 91, yeah, Tupac was big to us. Uh, now, he wasn't the mega star. Right, okay. But he was still a star. He had some music out. Okay. Sorry to my hip-hop historians. Fucking the timeline nah, up a little all, bit. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> so, so, that's my introduction of physically being there. I physically didn't get to take nothing. I physically probably got hit with the with the uh, <laughs> mic stand because there was some hitting too. Right. We took some, cause we climbing up onto the stage, uh -huh. but they had some guys too, you know what I mean? So that's my introduction. When they say, oh, JT and them just jumped Tupac, nah, that didn't happen like that. Or oh, JT and them robbed, nah, that's not the story. He just happened to be with the wrong guy at the wrong time, so right. he took his ill. So what happens to the jewelry? Because these days, obviously, it does like an iPhone tour around like various neighborhoods. The and jewelry shit. <laughs> is sitting in the hands of a man that don't care nothing about clout. Still to this day. To this day. But he's keeping it because it's a piece of history, because it came from Tupac? Because he the one got it. Really? So the guy who took it still has he it? He still got it. Really? Yes. And he never considered he trying to care about him. Even though I've seen they had something about selling the ring to Drake for a million so, and all that, yeah. he might pop out with it because he got the pictures that night with Tupac wearing it. Wow. And then now he got the pictures of him having it. That's actually insane to think that jewelry could be worth so much more just because a rapper owned it at one point. Like yes. they're like a king or a queen or yes, some shit. Man. But it makes nah, sense, yeah. Nah. But then my next interaction with Tupac is that the video shoot for Ray Love uh, last night, Tupac the director, Ghetto Thing for Mac Maul, Tupac directed and starred in both of these, and it was in Los Angeles. And <clears throat> that was... 1995, I remember my uncle drove me down here because Layla Steinberg was Tupac's manager too mm -hmm. before. 
but now she's manager of Ray Love and Mac Maul. So she the one called me say, JT, you need to come to LA. We doing Tupac is directing both of these videos, and I, you know, we want you to be part of that. Shout out to uh, Layla Steinberg and uh, uh, Kyrie, CEO and producer of Young Black Brother. Mm. So I come down there. <clears throat> At first, I wasn't really tripping about what we did because that was four years ago. It's, it's nothing. Nah, it's still kind of something, but it's the way I pay for it. We doing the video. Or he's directing the video. I'm just doing the scenes that I'm part of. I'm part, you know, I'm right there. So we're not talking to nothing yet. During one of the breaks, um, we both end up in the same, in the RV where pretty much everybody else got off. And he had his ounce of weed that he rolled in these blunts back to back. And he's smoking and it's looking like he's stressed about something, right? So when he passed me the blunt, we talking, but his stress coming from, his case or his situation in New York. And when we talk, the conversation about what happened in Frisco is like, you know, bro, uh, I salute you, you know, everything, you know, I'm talking with him. I salute you, bro, everything, man, nigga, you know, it's love, you feel me? I know that little shit happened. He like, man, that's the past, homie, right? He had bigger fish to fry at the moment. Yeah. But I'm just trying to make sure that I said something because now I'm an artist mm. in the game. At that time, I wasn't an artist yet. Okay. So now I'm an artist, so I'm trying to make sure that, you know, we good, right? So the Outlaws come back on, or not the Outlaws, they was called the Thug Life, I think. Yeah, they oh, was yeah, Thug yeah. Life. They come back on the bus, they deep. Now that's you know. somebody who put on a lot of his homies. Yes. Tupac yes. was not worried about yes. that at all. yes. <laughs> That um, that that conversation faded, you know. So I felt good, like you know. At this time, they had them chip phones, mm -hmm. them burning phones where you could buy it and stay on for six months and all that type of stuff. So I had two phones. I asked somebody for a charger to plug it up. That was that was from his group, Thug Life. Mm -hmm. So I plugged my phones up. Then I needed something from the gas station or the store or something. Somebody said, I'm going to the store. So I leave my two phones here, go to the store. When I come back, my um, both my phones is gone. So I'm like, hey, bro, uh, what, anybody seen where them phones was right here? Like, nah, I ain't seen no phones. And Tupac was laughing. So I don't know, to this day, when I kept asking for my phones, nobody never... They just kept smoking and kept talking. Cause I'm like, so I can't really like make no scene, but I'm like, bro, did these niggas just steal my phones, bro? They the only ones on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> but you think it was like quiet retribution for the chain? I think so. Cause like, how do my phones, and they was burning out, burnouts, but I'm still like, man, bro, I'm asking these niggas, and they like, nah, I ain't seen no phones. So y'all, the same people who sitting here when I went to the gas station, come back and now y'all ain't seen the phones? Right. And when I came in and Pac had the little smirk on his face, he never been like, hey, y'all, where his phone was at? He didn't say nothing. He just kind of like had the little smirk and kept on rolling the smoke. And I'm like, I just walked off the bus. I'm like, I got played like a sucker, bro. They took my two phones. That's the last time you ever saw him? That's the last time. Wow. That's the last time. You got time. memories of how it shook the fucking world when he, when he passed? Yes, because soon as after that video shoot, two weeks later, Tupac Shakur shot at Choir Studios. Wow, okay. I felt a certain kind of way. Two weeks later. <laughs> you yep. felt like I felt a you. certain kind. No, 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 no. Not oh, in okay. the I felt bad for him. Okay. Cause he already going to court for the the, the girl and then mm. get shot. So it's like, damn, he going to court. Then come to find out, supposedly, allegedly, whoever had something to do with the shooting had something to do with sending the girl to, to do the fake little rape thing. That's true. I mean, allegedly. The, oh, okay. Yeah, you know. I know Vlad ended he up. He said something about it. Vlad ended up interviewing the girl from that situation. I don't think Did I, she confess? Or did she say he did it or didn't do it? I don't know if I ever actually ended up watching it, but I always thought it was pretty crazy that he got that interview. But, damn, okay. So there wasn't any part of you that was, like, angry at him for the fucking phone situation? No, nah, I'm saying they nonchalantly, like, ain't no phone. It never was no phone shit. Right. Ain't no 
cord, no, no charge, the charger gone, the phone's gone. I don't, it's no evidence that I that there ever was two phones sitting here. <laughs> right, yeah. So when he starts smirking, I, I'm like, he act like he's probably squashing, but I don't think he mm. did it. But I think he green lighted somebody with that. Hey, bro, who phones it? Man, that's that nigga, man. That Frisco nigga, Phil Moore, <laughs> man, gonna take them phones, man. Right. Yeah, so. Crazy. Yeah, but I mean, shit, to be honest with you, I was like, shit, that's how I go, though. Mm. It come it come with this, it, you know, and to throw this situation in there, I remember since we did that to him, that was 91. 92 a year later, I get booked through my homeboy. He, he go rent the Richmond Auditorium. He booked Master P mm. and some Richmond rappers. He booked. Some Honey's Point, RBL, JT the bigger fix. So he now he got all this collaboration finna happen. Somebody from Honey's Point did something to somebody from Richmond in some type of way of they felt disrespected. So they got a few of their homies and ran the Honey's Point dudes up out of there. I think they were from Oakdale and they was tripping some rappers. I can't think of their name, but they was uh, they came in Richmond like tripping by some Honey's Point tripping, right? So RBL Posse, I think they got up out of there just because it started not looking safe because this is mostly Richmond people. We from Frisco. Mm. So when I go on stage, all I can remember hearing was projects, projects. They coming down the aisles and they got the chairs in their hands and they commenced to Stomping on us and beating us good. Shout out to Master P and them, man. They put a good beating on us. <laughs> they put a, they put a. <laughs> and what year was this? <laughs> this 1992, bro. I was about 18. This is my first, my first album. Then came out. Uh, I think it's December 92, and 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 I just remember, boy, we barely made it up out of there. Two of my homeboys end up going to the hospital. Holy Nobody shit. died. We got outside, boy. They were standing across the street in the. Uh, Behind the garbage cans, busting at the cars. I remember the car going. Wait, slow. people were shooting at your, Man, at your tour they, buses the, or whatever. Nah, we didn't have no tour bus. Just then. cars. We okay. just had cars, but everybody at that back, everybody at the backstage, that was us. So they just waited for us to come out. Whoever didn't get beat on the inside, we had to duck the bullets <laughs> on the outside Holy to try to get. Shit. It. Man, listen, it was pure chaos. But we just had we we we, we jumped Tupac and them. Then we jumped Mac Dre and them. The Mac Dre situation, it wasn't like that's what we was trying to do. It was just in field mode when everybody come in our neighborhood, we want to be them niggas in, in the club or the party at the time. So that was one of the names I was going to bring up next was Mac Dre. Like, what, When did you first meet him? What was the origin of your... My first introduction, Mac Dre, we was jumping them niggas and they, and they was getting up out of there. <laughs> and so where did it take place? San Francisco, uh, downtown on Folsom Street. And a guy named Jay Diggs. Let me tell y'all about that. Let me speak on say well, this. You're currently so, so, having some issues with yeah. Yeah, Jay Diggs act like he was there that night. Okay. He's telling the story about Mac Dre and them and Cool Nut and all these dudes at some concert. Jay Diggs, you're lying, boy. At this situation, it was a party only. It was on Folsom Street, not Broadway. He wasn't there, but it was somebody there. That when we start getting on Mac Dre and them. And let me tell you how it started. It was really because Mac Dre and them was fresh up in there. They had them curls and they had them jean suits on, you know, the old school <laughs> jean coat with the jean. So it was really that they were fresh. And, and then my partner got into it with one of his partners, and his partner hit my man in the head with a bottle and ran out the club. And then, But when he done that, because he was gangster, he did his thing, Mac Dre and them was still right here. So they had to come through us to get out because his man just hit. So we only attacked them because of what his man did. But when we chased Mac Dre and them out of there, Jay Diggs was not there. Somebody else, we chased him down, down the uh, street where it's a dead end. they in a minivan. But whoever that dude was who hit with the bottle, he already had the car started up. So by the time we chasing Mac Dre and them down, down to the bottom of it, he's spinning the car around and whipped out that tech boy. Shout out to Mac Dre, RP Mac Dre. Shout out to the Crest side. Man, we seen that tech come out. Thank God he didn't shoot because we was close enough. He like, nigga, back up. 
man, we start scattering because we figured they're going to shoot And this anyway. was Mac Dre's friend. Mac Dre's friend. Right. But Mac Dre is in the van, though. Right. So that situation, I just always saluted him. You know, uh, that was my introduction. Right. My next time and first time meeting him personally and physically when he got out of prison. I love how you, like, have all these fights with people and then you end up meeting him on, like, some cool shit after. <laughs> because, you know, when you when you young and, like, 18, 19, 20, like that. Yeah, yeah. You kind of still, you know, that's 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 kind of okay. Like in my older years now, I would never be want to do no stupid shit like that. But when you young, trying to make a name, you know, for the wrong reasons, it's different now too with the internet, where it's like if you get beat up by somebody, you're on his Instagram, you're figuring out exactly who he is and like plotting your revenge. It's not yes. like back then; it was like you're just a dude. Like very people, few people there yes. are even gonna know your name, yes. right? But 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 this is what I seen. I said, man, being from Filmo is popular, but we popular for the bad stuff, right? Mm. And that's where I think my my shift of changing, like, see, I don't want to be known as, like, I'm trying to be the bad guy and because my niggas with this bad guy shit, that's going to have an impact on my career. I got to fall back from this shit, and I think we need to be known for networking, and I think that's what make me want to network with so many other places, because back then we used to only be like, nigga, feel my only, fuck everybody else, nigga, it's mm. all about us. Like, how a lot of dudes, <laughs> how a lot of dudes is now, man, fuck the other side, nigga, this, nigga, we the best thing going. Right. Yeah, that's cool, but you finna have drama, nigga, and it's gonna be blood shit like how it is today, but back then, you could jump somebody and it ain't gonna be no drive ball. You could get jumped, like I say, <clears throat> we did that to Mac Dre and Tupac in both situations. It wasn't even their fault. It was mm. somebody that was with them fault. It wasn't that they did something to provoke us. It's the nigga that's with you. So, but you said you met him again after he got out of jail. When he got out of jail, <clears throat> we met, or we was. I was at a restaurant, and he just got out of prison that day or the day before, or a couple. You know. And when we saw each other, we didn't think about none of that because he probably didn't know that was me at the time when that happened. Right. I mean, we talked about it later. But I I was on from doing the movies. I'm doing the promo. I got the compilation. Like, I made a lot of motion. When he went to jail, I didn't have none of this motion. So when he came home, I was JT the bigger figure. So by me and him talking, I showed Mac Dre how to do the compilations. Mm -hmm. His first project was the uh, uh, romp, romp, romp a room lation or the romp, rompilation. That's what it's called. We had a song called uh, uh, Gangsta Gumbo or Ghetto Gumbo, something like that. That's the first track on the project that was created. And I was giving him the blueprint. And Mac Dre took that knowledge mixed with what he already knew and just went crazy with it from there. So shout out to Mac Dre, RP, bless his God, bless his family.